Yeah, that's really important. Like uh, networking is one of the most important criteria that you need to have when you want to go both in industry and academia because academia also needs some uh, networking. So during my PhD, uh, I had the opportunity to collaborate with uh, some uh, biotech industry at that time. So that has gave me some networking uh, opportunities. Welcome to the PhD talk show by Biopatrica. I am Dr. Alberta Joseph Alexander, host for today's session. And with me is Dr. Saikat Bala, scientist too at Beam Therapeutics in the USA. Nice to have you, Dr. Bala. Thanks, Alberta, for arranging such a nice uh, talk show. And I am really uh, happy and excited uh, to attend here. You're most welcome. What I want to start off with is by asking you about how your studies in pharmaceutical sciences, et cetera, would have prepared you for your present role as, uh, uh, in RNA development at Beam Therapeutics. Yeah, that's uh, so. It uh, started a long time before I started PhD. So I did uh, my bachelor's and a master's in India, uh, and focusing on chemistry, uh, mainly organic chemistry. And uh, I get a chance to do some research, the undergraduate research on uh, peptides and nucleic acid uh, back in India. So I was really interested uh, on those fields. So when I came to US for doing my uh, PhD, I get a chance to work with Dr. John Shapu, who is my uh, PhD supervisor, working on like uh, nucleic acid uh, chemistry and their application in therapeutic areas. So I get a chance to work uh, on those uh, field chemistry uh, that is the interface between biology also, and that gives me a big exposure to the field of origin of life and RNA therapeutics and nucleic acid therapeutics all those areas. So I spent uh, like five years uh, working uh, on those areas, which helped me to get into my present position at Beam Therapeutics, where uh, I am leading the external and internal uh, development and production of RNA. So my PhD training uh, helped me a lot uh, for my present uh, work that uh, I'm doing here in Beam. And uh, that training also helped me uh, to focus on like the research and development that needs uh, to the RNA process development. So yeah, that is how I get into uh, my present position uh, where uh, I'm working on the RNA uh, therapeutic process development. Thanks for sharing that journey and how, how it really impacted where you are pre presently. And one of the interesting things is that you find graduates would, uh, it's common for them to move on to a postdoc, but that definitely was not your experience. So therefore, could you share some insights for us on how you were able, in my opinion, to, to make that quick transition into an industry role? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. So um, uh, I finished my PhD in 2019 uh, and uh, I tried in both academia and uh, industry that time. So uh, for an immigrant like me uh, working here as a PhD, uh, we have that uh, issue of the migration always. So uh, I, if, if, even if I get to a PA a postdoc or industry, I need to find someone to sponsor my visa uh, down the road. But I have a long-term uh, goal uh, to uh, step into the industry, mainly the biotech. Uh, so I thought like, why not now? Like, why do you, why do I need to do a postdoc to go into an industry? So I tried uh, applying uh, for the industry mostly. And uh, the first thing, like I got some responses uh, uh, right after my PhD is done. And, I, and they are uh, and the industries the back that time uh, are willing to sponsor uh, my immigration issues. So and uh, I found it uh, really suitable for my career, and I moved into there. But I uh, I wanted to do a postdoc that time, but uh, it was not always my choice. 
to go for because it's not only the science but also uh, of staying in this country <laughs> you need uh, that immigration issue so yeah so whoever was willing to uh, uh, resolve that problem for me um, uh, i was uh, happy to go there so and as i mentioned like i had a long term uh, plan to step into the industry um, down the road so uh, i thought like yeah, they write up the phd I, I can go there so that's main reason like of going into the industry right after my phd right and uh... So sometimes in making that trans transition, uh, networking is important. Uh, could you share a little bit more on some of the networking that you would have had to go do in order to make that whole transition process more successful for you? Yeah, that's really important. Like uh, networking is one of the most important criteria that you need to have when you want to go both in industry and academia because academia also needs some uh, networking so during my phd uh, i had the opportunity to collaborate with uh, some uh, biotech industry at that time so that uh, gave me some networking uh, opportunities uh, and uh, in my, our university so i did my phd from university of california at arvine so the university of california arvine has this uh, career fair uh, happen almost every 3 to 4 months so I joined all those career fairs. I talked to different people from industries. I make my rapport with them, try to build the networking. And I also, I would uh, join different uh, conferences uh, here and there. And by then, uh, by that uh, conferences, career fair, working with, collaborating with different industry people. So I got the chance to do the networking. So I think that helped me a lot, uh, focusing uh, on my industry career and uh, to land in that industry position. So yeah, networking is very important. Great. And uh, be besides the networking and putting yourself out there, I, I know usually persons would have to like prepare their, their resume, <laughs> etc. And I, I wonder if you may want to share some tips on what you found was more, more successful in, in that area in terms of making yourself attractive for the industry positions. Yeah, that's a great question, uh, Alberta. So the thing is like the resume that you prepare for uh, applying for postdoc is different uh, than uh, the one you are applying for the industry. So for postdoc, you need to focus on your academic strength, like how many publications do you have, what type of research you did during your PhD. So you need to focus and you need to put all those information uh, in that resume. But when you are applying for industry, uh, you can put your publications patterns back there. But the the all this all the thing like all they want to know like how compatible you are working in a like team environment or how compatible you are in a collaborating with someone. So you have to put some information uh, that helps them understanding you, like uh, you know, whether you are a good person to take in the, into their company. So the thing is like when you are doing a PhD, you do everything by yourself. So I am talking as a chemist that, yeah, I do my synthesis work, I do the analytics, I wrote the paper, I publish. So everything is by myself, but in industry is a different environment. So you just do your own part. Then there are lots of other people you need to collaborate. Uh, uh, to finish the part so there are like different people in different sectors in the same industry helping you finish the project so yeah you have to be very collaborative you have to be open-minded so you have those uh qualities need to be there and you need to show them in your resume when you are applying for uh, an industry position so yeah i talked to uh, people uh, from industries at that time during my uh, during the networking time and this is really important to have the proper information. So information is very, really important when you are preparing yourself for some next role, either in the academia or in the industry, it doesn't matter. But yeah, information is very important. So I got the information from different sources here and there from people who are already in the industry and people who are applying with me in the industry. I talked to them. So yeah, I prepared my resume and I tried not to focus on my publication. Uh, in my resume, I just give my Google Scholar link. Okay, if you are interested for my paper, just go there and you can see that. I just put like two or three major publications that is uh, related 
to the uh, to the field I'm applying for in my industry. So those help me a lot, and I try to uh, teach myself uh, how will be uh, about the environment that I'm going to face uh, in the industry, how I can be compatible with those environment there. So yeah, I try to modify my resume based on the role, based on the industry, and based on the people that I'm working on. So that is how I tailored my uh, resume uh, back that time, back that time. Thanks for those good tips. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder if you might be able to share, because many, you know, if not everybody who in a professional role or trying to get into a professional role, they on some of the, the, the sites like LinkedIn, et cetera. And I wonder if you could share a little bit about how, how the experience of being on LinkedIn can be beneficial for a graduate student uh, who's just finished their PhD to help them to make that transition. So I believe uh, LinkedIn is one of the best uh, social networking platform uh, for networking, for job search, for lots of different professional work. So LinkedIn helped me a lot networking with other people. And uh, I, I would ask, I mean, I would give, give the tips to the new, people, new uh, students who are trying to apply in industry to at least uh, create a LinkedIn profile if you don't have any. And uh, LinkedIn is like a elaborated resume. So when someone visits your profile, they will know who you are long before they are interacting with you. So what you do, what is your expertise, and uh, like everything, they will know from a LinkedIn profile. So I would suggest uh, to update the LinkedIn profile uh, periodically. Don't just make it like now and change every two years. Don't do that. So I'll suggest to update that, to modify that based on your uh, on your cap capacities, and uh, try to interact. Not don't just make a profile. Try to interact with other people. Try to search what you're interested in, and uh, reach out to other people uh, like who can help you transitioning in your in industry or in academia, wherever you want to go. So yeah. LinkedIn is really important. LinkedIn is really important, uh, like social networking uh, platform, according to me. So yeah, try making one uh, profile uh, if you don't have any, and uh, create like create a profile and modify this periodically with the changes uh, if you have any, and try to interact with other people of your interest. Yes, some other great tips, <laughs> and uh, no doubt today's session produce a lot of key insights and information that would be relevant and important for those graduates, PhD graduates who are transitioning into industry, including industries in the biotechnology sector. And so we want to thank Dr. Saikat Bala for making himself available to, to be that mentor through this medium of the PhD talk show to help with that transition. So we want to thank you again for being here as our guest. Well, thank you, thank you so much. And yeah, I'll, I'll be really happy to help other uh, uh, to achieve uh, their their goal. This is this is a, this is a pleasure. Mm -hmm.